Welcome to Fish Nerds. It's a celebration of fish, fishing, and eating fish that is always interesting, usually funny, and mostly true. I'm Harry Desmond of BerkshireRiversFlyFishing.com, and here are the nerds. Welcome to the Fish Nerds. We're hanging out here at Kittery Trading Post in Kittery, Maine at their big spring fish and hunt event. Look, I'm in the paper. The fish famous. So this event is, goes on until Sunday, which by the time this releases will be gone. So if you're watching the live stream of this, get here today and uh, big 20% off their clothing and 15% off camping. But more importantly, lots of cool fish and stuff happening. Check it all out. I guess they're having huge sales on things like uh, Shimano and G. Loomis and all kinds of salesman rep samples for sale. And if you're into guns, they've got guns. And today there's a kids casting contest right next to us, coloring, all kinds of other vendors here hanging out. So totally fun event. And on uh, today's show, we're going to be recording live all day here at Kittery Trading Post. And uh, we'll see what happens. I have no idea what this show is going to bring, but it should be should be a really good job. This is our second time the Fish Nerds have been at Kittery for this event, and we're super happy to uh, to be part of this. Bob Pelletier from back in the mainstream. Bob, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Welcome to the Fish Nerds. I met you a couple of years ago at this same event, didn't I? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, well, it's good to see you yep, again. you too. Hey, what is in the mainstream? Back in the mainstream, back in the mainstream. is a nonprofit that we have here in the state of Maine where we put... Uh, Maine's disabled veterans on the water fishing. Which is really a good thing to be doing. Yes, a lot of fun. Yeah, and they must love it. Oh, yes, they do. And uh, we go on 12, 13 different trips every year, all the way from uh, the Catskills in New York, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, uh, all over New England. That's really great. Now, uh, so it's a nonprofit. So That's correct. So you're probably, your biggest thing you need all the time as a nonprofit is money. Is that correct? That's correct. Because you want to fund this. And, you know, a lot of our listeners are vets. And, of course, we all appreciate um, vets. And, and so we all should be giving you money, right? Yes. How do we give you money? You can go to our website, which is uh, backinthemainstream.org. Or you can go to our Facebook page, which is all capital is B-I-T-M-S. That's on Facebook, and that will give you the uh, information that you need if you would like to donate to Back in the Mainstream. And, you know, people really should. And, and do you, you take all different levels of donation? People want to give you 10 bucks. that's cool, or 100 bucks. We'll or take 10, anything from a, from a dollar up to 10000 Yeah, and one of the things that people don't realize, a lot of people, I work, I work in a nonprofit, and a lot of people don't realize the power of just $1. And if every single person who hears these things or hears these stories would just drop a dollar in the hat, it makes a huge difference to you guys. It doesn't hurt us individually, but man, does it make a difference to nonprofits like yours. Yes, it does. It makes a big difference because uh, all of the monies that, uh, that are generated are given to uh, back in the mainstream go right back to the veterans and their fishing trips. Uh, we do have a board of directors. We're all disabled vets ourselves, but we all volunteer our time. So uh, we don't take any salaries or anything like that. If you give me a dollar, that goes right back to, to help pay for the, uh, the trips. That's cool. Now, can you tell us, uh, just give us an anecdote, tell us one quick story about a vet you've taken that was really great? Well, we have uh, one of our vets that is uh, blind, and we have another vet that doesn't have any hands. He has a couple of prostheses, and... Uh, we do get those guys on the water. They do fly fish and catch just as many fish as the rest of us. That's, that's amazing. Now, logistically, I'm going to ask you kind of take, so you took a blind guy fishing. Correct. Um, and so that must, he must, who was he always blind or was he blind because he got disabled? He was blind uh, due to his service in the military. All right. So he, he had experienced fishing as a sighted person before. Correct. And so he had, he had some of the ideas and he knew how to feel for a fish. He had all that kind of worked out. Right. Was it his first time fishing since being blinded? Uh, no, Stanley's been going with us now for, well, with uh, back in the mainstream for almost five years now. Yeah. Now, because I, I, I know the fishing is a, is a game of feeling, right? Correct. When you're fishing, you're in touch with your line. You're feeling the fish on the end of your line. So I imagine those senses for him are heightened. Oh, yes. And he must yeah. really just crush it, right? Oh, it's, he does just as good a job as any of the rest of us. Uh, 
We do pick on him a little bit sometimes. We'll throw, <laughs> we throw our line over his and uh -huh. yank on it. And so uh, he thinks he's got a fish on. But Stanley uh, does real good and catches just as many fish as the rest of us. That's fantastic. That's really great. Great. And, Bob, give us a web website one more time. The website is uh, backinthemainstream.org, and that's all lowercase letters. And we'll put links up at fishnerds.com, and then we encourage everyone to throw a few bucks in the hat and keep you guys going because, you know, without the vets, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have the freedom to make a podcast like this or do anything we do. So uh, we appreciate all that service, and it's kind of amazing what you do. Well, we thank you very much. And uh, there again, any, any monies that are generated all go right back to the veterans for their trips. Perfect. Thanks, Bob. Thank you very much. He's right over in the shop. All right, Clay Gross, fishnerds.com at Kittery Trading Post. And we're, we're coming around here, and we see there's a kid here named Joshua who I couldn't find before because he's all in camouflage. I couldn't even see him. But he's a serious tie flyer. Joshua, how are you? Good. Oh, I'm 11. 11 years old. Now I have a 10-year-old daughter, and she's useless. And you look like you do useful things. What are you doing? Um, tying a fly. Tying a fly. Now, um, can you, what kind of fly are you tying? Um, I'm going to try to tie a Mickey fin. Can you describe what a Mickey fin is? Oh, it's a streamer fly. And on the bottom, it has the yellow, red, and then yellow. Yellow, red, then yellow. And how are those colors significant? Um, well, the trout like the red and the yellow combination. And they look cool too, right? What, is that your favorite kind of fly? Um, yeah. yeah. And do you, are you normally a trout fisherman? Um, no. What do you normally fish for? Oh, yeah, I do trout, bass, and then mostly everything. Everything. So it makes you a total fish nerd. That's really cool. When you finish this fly, can you walk by? I'll be over there at the Fish Nerds booth. Can you come on over and show me? Yeah. You did that one right there? What is that? Um, I'm not sure. I Make up a name. Um, like Harry McStinky? Perfect. Um, mm. Feathery mm. Gillicuddy? Joshy McJosh face. Um, um. <laughs> All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll take a picture of that fly. We'll put it up on our Fish Nerds Facebook page, and we'll have a fly naming contest just for you. Yeah, so good. Hey, nice job. Come by afterwards. Show me your fly, okay? Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Captain Sean Tibbetts. And Nick Howard. And we're hanging out at Kittery Trading Post, big fishing sale here. It's been really busy today. Did yeah, good time? Absolutely. And, uh, and, and we're here to kind of talk about some stuff we're going to be doing that's coming up. Yeah, so absolutely. So we've been talking about, a couple years ago, the Fish Nerds and Captain Sean partnered and gave away a fishing trip. And we were talking all winter about doing that again. And now that you're here, we're thinking, kid, are you trading post? Fish Nerds, your chocolates and my peanut butter. I mean, this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So it seems to make good sense. It's like, a, you know, yeah, perfect. So... So coming up soon, and we're not going to tell you when yet, but coming up soon, we'll be announcing uh, a new contest where you'll have an opportunity to enter to win a fishing trip with Kittery Trading Post, Captain Sean Tibbetts, and the Fish Nerds. Uh, and other things are happening too, right? you got a big fishing thing coming up in June? Yeah, yeah. Well, we got our big June summer sale event. Um, so during that time period, you'll be able to come in and hopefully win a trip to go fishing with us. Um, but in addition to that, there's all kinds of other events going on. It's one of our bigger sales. Um, there's something for everybody, kids, uh, no matter what you're into, whether it's camping, fishing, hunting. We've got stuff during that event that'll appeal to you. Um, but these seminars are something new we're doing. Um, I'm really excited about it, partnering with uh, Maine Tuna Fishing, um, partnering with uh, Twin Maple Outdoors. We, we like that Twin Maple Outdoors. Yeah, we Yvonne do. Richard is fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and partnering with some of our great brands as well. Um, and just kind of, and the Fish Nerds, obviously, but kind of bring it all together um, to make this kind of a real fun event. Um, there's something for everybody, whether you ice fish, obviously, um, whether you're an offshore guy, big, fish, uh, big game fisherman, fly fishing, it doesn't matter. Um, between the, the three guides we have here, we've got everything covered, um, and we've got the gear covered here too. So well, that'd be perfect. So we're giving away a, a, a ocean trip. Yep. Are you giving away other trips? Well, we're working on some other trips too. Yeah. Um, you know, there's one thing that we're we're kind of still in the works, but if you if you kind of stay tuned to the to the Fish Nerd podcast and and the KTPEvents.com website, you know, your details will be kind of popping up. Um, but yeah, there's going to be uh, more than one trip given away during that that week that 10 day sale. 10-day sale. Yeah, it's uh, June 17th to the 25th. 
Um, there's some other fun stuff happening I can't talk about yet, but uh, either way, it's going to be a great event. So. All super secret stuff. Now, I got for both of you, I got two questions. First question, what's the strangest thing you've ever caught a fish on? Like strangest bait you've used or strangest lure you've used? Hmm, that's a good question. I'm afraid of your answer, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, you know, not, not that it's strange, um, but just grasshoppers, you know, just that's something that works well for me. If I, if I happen to ha have them in my yard, I'll put them in a, in a jar, put a couple holes in it, and they love grasshoppers they, for, for bass fishing. But not that it's unusual, but it certainly is it's not, not, common. not common. Yeah. How about you, Sean? He's a driftwood with a hook through it. Not bad. <laughs> I'm expecting like, some horrible. Like, yeah, well, I was like, that's X-rated. So I, was like, yeah. I knew what you were thinking anyway. Yes. So, yeah, and the other question I have for you is, can you describe what a Collins perch is? A Collins perch, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Collins perch. Oh, jeez. No, no Googling. This is testing your knowledge. What is a Collins perch? So on the New Hampshire Fishing Game website, is that CP on the on the depth map? Chart? That's right, oh, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Perch, yeah. Jeez, uh, Collins Perch. <laughs> it sounds like bait. <laughs> I use those depth maps all the time. I you can't too. tell. Yeah. Um, geez, I don't. I got me on that one. All right, cool. How about you, Sean? Bait. Bait. All right. Well, we'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you're not already following along with Kennedy Trading Post, you can follow their Facebook. They got like 200,000 people or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Some ridiculous yep. amount of people. KTPEvents.com right? always has our our current events going. Um, as well as uh, yep, Facebook and working on Instagram and all the other yep. methods and trying and of to get course, out there. We'll share out with, with our audience all the stuff coming up. But stay tuned because this trip is going to be really great. The last trip that Sean and I partnered with, um, we went out fishing for Mako Shark. And the person who won, uh, this was a trip of a lifetime for him. And him and his dad got together. They came out with the, with the fish nerds and Sean and kind of like a six and a half foot yeah, Mako. Six and a half foot Nice. Yeah, Ryan caught that, and the, the shark was, it jumped out of the water, and I almost jumped out of the boat, <laughs> because I didn't want to be on the same side of the, as the water as the fish. Like oh, it wow. Was, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was so scary, and so cool, and the coolest thing about it was Sean was cutting it up to, to, to fillet it, and the meat keeps moving. Like, it's, it's such a... It, really? I, yeah. I didn't know that, actually. Yeah. And then I went to a bar afterwards on the way to get a beer, and I tipped the lady at the bar like four pounds of shark meat. <laughs> and she was she got big, gave me a big hug afterwards, some Irish bar down the street from where you guys were. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it was totally fun. So it's gonna it's a great trip, ton of fun, and if you've never fished with Captain Sean before, um, go to the bathroom before you get on the boat. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Clay, most people have don't have a problem urinating in public. Clay can't use a public bathroom. That's true, right? Well, we got the uh, portable bathrooms upstairs with the little screens. You can, you know, you're totally enclosed. And yeah. So, you know, I might, maybe I'll bring one of them along. I am pee shy. <laughs> so I have a proximal peeing issue. I can't uh, pee if I'm near okay. somebody. Gotcha. Yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> Especially when they're yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a ton of fun, uh, and, and, and it'll be a lot of great, great stuff coming up. So thank you for uh, your time. I just made a new friend. Her name is Grace. Grace, how are you? Good. Good. Where are you from? Sanford, Maine. Sanford, Maine. Where's that? It is in Maine. It is in Maine, yeah. And that's all I know about Sanford also. And what grade are you in? Fifth. Fifth grader from Sanford, Maine. All right, Grace, i got a few questions for you. Ready? Okay. All right, so Grace fishes a lot, right? Yes. Okay. And you fish freshwater or saltwater? Salt. Okay. In the ocean, what's the weirdest fish you've ever caught? Salmon. Salmon are totally weird. What's weird about it? It's that you can eat them. Yeah, that is weird. Do they like being eaten? No. No, probably not, but they're delicious, aren't they? Yes. Yes. And what do you think a Collins perch is? A kind of fish. It's totally a kind of fish. Think it's a big fish or a little fish? A big fish. A big fish. Lots of people think a Collins perch is a big fish. And what is your favorite kind of fish to catch? Bait. Bait. What kind of bait fish? Um, just regular bait. Just regular bait. And what do you use for bait to catch bait? Um, worms. Worms? I, that's what I use, too. Do you ever fish with fishing lures? Yes. Yes. What's your favorite lure? The regular. The regular ones. Those are ones I like as well. That's really cool. And that's all the questions I have for you, Grace. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming on the podcast. You're welcome. All right. Bye. My name is Reed. Reed and yeah. Ty. And Reed and Ty, where are you from? 
Uh, we're from Hampton Falls, New Hampshire. Hampton Falls, New Hampshire. And do you guys fish? Yes. A yeah. lot. <laughs> All right. When you hear the word fish nerds, what do you think of? Us. You, Us. you guys are total nerds, right? Does that mean you're obsessed with fish? Yes. Okay. Yes. Tell me, let me ask you a couple of questions, okay? okay? Tell me, first of all, your favorite fish to catch. Uh, Rainbow trout. Rainbow trout. You're a freshwater guy. Largemouth bass. Largemouth bass, also a freshwater guy. What family of fish is a largemouth bass in? Yeah, they're not in the bass family, no. They're not? No, they are a, they are a sunfish. Yeah. Oh. What family of fish are rainbow trout in? Say trout. Trout. Good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so they are definitely a trout, no question about it. Yeah, and it's funny, and, and a true bass, like a striped bass, is in the bass family. Oh. And a white perch. Guess what family of fish a white perch is in? Bass. Bass family, right. It's so bizarre. They're not even perch at all. Uh-huh. So the fishing world's a crazy, nerdy place, but I like to know all this stuff. Now, I want to hear two things from you guys. First thing I want to hear from you, I want you to tell me the strangest bait you've ever loosed, used to catch a fish. Strangest bait you've ever caught a fish with. Like, for example, um, when I was your age, I would use hot dogs as bait to catch fish. Have you ever used anything strange to catch, or a, a funny lure? Oh, I've tried to use a hot dog before, but it didn't work. No, I didn't say it worked. <laughs> oh, okay. But I tried. Oh, I tried to use a cherry. Use a cherry to catch a fish? Yeah. No, I didn't. Oh. Now, no. cherries do work for carp. I do? Yes. Oh. And hot dogs, I'm told, use work for pike. Yeah. Uh, ice fishing. I know a guy who takes a hot dog, puts it under a tip-up, and catches pike on it. Oh, cool. Or so he says. Yeah. Now, as you know, most fishermen are liars. So not you guys. Well, they just stretch the truth. I, I like how nice you are. We, my dad called that lying, but you can, you're can you nicer yeah. than I am. How old are you guys? I'm 12. I'm 12, too. You're both 12. Yeah. Friends or brothers? Friends. 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 If you guys got in a fight, who would win? Me. I'm just asking. Uh-huh. You don't have to do it. Yeah, definitely. So don't hit each other. Stop it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those hugs. You're like, I'm hugging you, but I'm hitting you. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, so one more question for you, too. Uh, actually, I have a bunch more questions for you. Um, have you ever heard of a Collins perch? No. Never. If you, when you imagine a Collins perch, what do you think of? A very colorful perch. Colorful perch. A normal perch. A normal perch. That's very interesting. I also, I think a small perch yeah. when I think of it. It's not really a thing. Oh. I made it up. So, oh. um, biggest fish you ever caught? Um, I would say like a 40-inch striped bass. Lies. Biggest fish you ever caught? Uh, 40 inches, yeah. Both are liars. I can't believe this. Full of it. Full of it. No, uh, <laughs> they're like 37 inches maybe. Really? 40 inches? Yeah. Was it the same fish? No. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> no. mean like someone tossed it to you and you caught it, or you actually caught it, caught it. Caught it, caught it. Caught it, caught it. And we're, so Hampton Falls. Yeah. Where do you go to school? Uh, I go to Sacred Heart. Uh-huh. I go to Ham- uh, Lincoln Acreman. You go where? Lincoln Acreman. That's the town school. <laughs> oh, okay. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Sounds like noise to me. Right, yeah. Yeah. So what's your, you, 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 you like to tell me your favorite fish. Do you eat fish? Yes. Yes. Favorite fish to eat? Salmon. Salmon? What kind of salmon? Uh, hmm. I, I like them all. You like them all kinds yeah. of salmon? How about you? I also like salmon. Really? I had some last night. Is there any fish you wouldn't eat? Oh, I've had bass before, but I didn't like it. So panfish. Panfish? Do you know why they call them panfish? Because you put them in a pan. Because they're delicious in a pan. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, so you've never eaten uh, a bluegill? No. Never eaten a yellow perch? No. Never eaten a white perch? Nope. You would love them. They're really? Totally good, yeah. Okay. Totally good. Next time, if you're thinking about eating a fish, you catch a bunch of panfish, eat them up. They're fabulous. Of course, okay. you fry anything, it's good. Yeah. Right? <laughs> All right. So, um, how often do you guys fish? Um, well, I have a lake house, so in the summer I fish like Let's go to lake house. Listen to this guy. Yeah, lake same. house. You both have lake houses? Yeah. Where, different lake houses? Yeah. Where, where's your lake house? Uh, Augusta, Maine. Augusta, Maine? Uh, up in New Hampshire. What part? I don't know. You don't even know? Where Where in New Hampshire is his lake house? Uh, Bull Lake. Bull Lake. Okay, I'm on the way. I live in New Hampshire. I'll be oh, there. cool. Yeah. I, I won't come. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't need new friends. So, um, <laughs> you guys are fantastic. Um, best fishing technique for you? Uh, I like to uh, do uh, top water. Top water? Why? 
because I like the explosion when fish come up. I do too. I have a friend who does topwater fishing and she cuts off the hooks and because she just likes the action. <laughs> So and she'll get a feel of a bass and stuff, and they'll pull on the line, but never get a hook in them. They just likes to watch them explode on, but she, but she feels bad for the fish. So, how about you, favorite style of fishing? Uh, double jointed swim baits. You know what that means? Like, oh, oh like the Daddy yeah, Mac yeah, stuff. Yeah. Oh, I love those. Yeah. They are, they're Kevlar. They're better than that. That's amazing. That's yeah. fun. I, I fished a big rat last year. Big really? fat. Oh yeah, I, I've seen those. Yeah, I caught Savage a Savage gears. Yeah, I caught a big giant bass on it. And I've always wanted to try to get one and try to catch a fish on it. Yeah, you should totally get one yeah. and do that. Have you used like the little duck? Uh, we were just talking about the duck. I'm gonna tell you a story, and you tell me what you think of this. Okay. So, what all these see all these all the old people hanging out in the room today? Yeah. Just yeah. one bunch of old guys over there. Yeah. Now old people are terrible people. Now, I'll tell you two reasons. One, old guys don't listen to podcasts, so they're never going to hear this. Okay. So we can say all the bad stuff we want about them. They don't know. <laughs> Plus, they're old. They're going to forget in two minutes anyway, right? Because they're old. <laughs> yeah. so, so here's the thing about old timers used to fish in terrible ways. In, I was talking to a guy in Vermont, not this guy. He's in Maine. I was talking to a guy in Vermont on the Connecticut River who used to be a pike fisherman. And he was a big fan of using um, ducks for bait. He would take a live duckling and a treble hook and put a rubber band around it. And then so it wouldn't be hooking the duck, right? So he felt like he was being kind. And then he would put it on a lily pad and open his bail, let the duck run across. I'm not making this up. And then the pike would go, <laughs> and explode out and eat it. Oh what do you think about that? Oh. You think that's okay? He's trying to rationalize. How many, how many did he use? Uh, one, 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 one bird caught one fish. I like. Are those your parents? Yeah. These guys are terrible people. They're not nice people. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Like so, I feel bad for the duckling. Yeah. Uh-huh. I like the idea of catching big, big pike. Right. So, could you get over your, um, your bad feelings to catch a big fish? Yeah. With a duckling? Yeah. I would just use How do you feel about using duckling. puppies? No. No. See, okay, you're not terrible. You're just bad. Yeah. So that's a different level. I think it's awful, but they now they make those other baits, right, that can yeah. mimic yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, no, I think we need one that's, like, radio controlled. Right. So you can really kind of work it. Yeah, that would be cool. Right? That would be awesome, right? Yeah, so awesome. that's your job. Take a robotics course in middle school. Mm-hmm. Make a robotic duck that can mimic that duck. And then call me, and we'll go fishing at your private ponds. Okay? okay? Oh, nice. Hey, guys, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to give you guys some decals and stuff, okay? okay. All right, check one. ClayGrossFishners.com. Hanging out here at Kittery Trading Post. And say your name again. Captain Russell Troy. Captain Russell Troy. And what captain of what? Um, catch 22 Sport Fishing up in the Kennebec River. I fish the Kennebec River. I love that river. That's an amazing place. And you're a Shimano rep. Yes. Tell us about, so you guys today, there was a line outside, several hundred people deep this morning when I got here, all for your reels. What, what's been the big thing today? Well, basically we sold out uh, pretty much all of the tuna reels, the 130s, uh, 80s, 50s, all the way down, and pretty much across the board, all of the reels are very well priced, so we've sold most of the stuff that we put out. That's exciting, and and uh, as being a Shimano guy, I mean that's for you must be really great. And what do you think of the whole event overall? Actually, it's uh, well attended. Um, we've done well every year for the past five, six years, and stuff, all through the store. That's great. And I got two more questions for you. Right. Okay, first one is, what's the strangest, strangest thing you've ever caught a fish on? Strangest lure or bait? Um, basically. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I, I've used the same stuff for a lot of years, uh, and I don't think it's strange. I catch a lot of fish. All right, well, what, what is your favorite bait, then? Um, actually, uh, swim baits. Good, I love swim baits, too. And have you ever heard of a Collins perch? No. If you were to guess what a Collins perch was, could you guess? Is it a swim bait? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just asking everyone one question. That's cool. Thank you so much for your time today. And where can people find Shimano products? Um, in the store, uh, year-round. We um, stock well. 
Perfect. Thanks. Now I can get that at Kittery Trading Post. No problem. Cool. Mics are hot. All right. How about a little fish in the news? Sounds good. You say, I love, I love fish in the news. I love fish in the news. I love it too. All right. So I'm here. Just let's introduce people. Mike Crooker, super fan of Fish Nerds Podcast. And Lindsay, super fan of everything. Everything. All things. Um, who are you repping for today? I'm here with Quantum today. Quantum. And what do they sell? Uh, physics? Have, yeah, physics. Yeah. Totally physics. Um, <laughs> no, we have a lot of new reels here today. Um, new bait caster. We have the monster bait caster. It has 24 pounds of drag, which is pretty exciting. Wow. That sounds like a drag. Yeah. Total drag. What, what does 24 pounds of drag mean? Uh, like really big you fish? You can horse yeah. in any much any freshwater fish you want. That's amazing. I've, I've never needed that much drag. Nope. <laughs> so, but maybe someday mm-hmm. I'll catch that fish where I really, really need it. All right. So we're going to do a little fish in the news today. And I think you guys will like this story. It's got to organize my notes here. Okay. This is a, a biology story. So I know you guys are both have biology background. Right, absolutely. In that masters. you probably took it yeah, once in high school. Yep. Yep. Maybe dropped out. I don't know. I know a biologist. I think I, you know, I, think I got a beat. Yeah, I met a biologist <laughs> once. All right. So this is from Science Daily. And I think, uh, I think Mike Stefan, one of our listeners, shared this with us. He is a biologist. Yes. Um, all right. So fish on the South Pacific island of Rarotonga have evolved the ability to survive out of water and leap out on the rocky shoreline because this helps them escape predators in the ocean. A groundbreaking news story shows. So this fish can live on the rocks. Like can breathe out of the water, like like a snakehead kind of. Well, let's let's read it uh, and Sorry. talk right into that, okay? Because. I don't know how much is all this noise. We are at Kittery Trading Post, and it is very noisy in here. So we're going we're gonna to do the best we can with this. Avoiding predators might be an explanation of why some animals move from their ancestral homes into starkly different environments. But evidence for this, rare, for this is rare because it's difficult to collect. Our study of blennies of Rarotonga is the first to examine the pressure driving fish out of the water. We did a story on blennies a few months ago. Okay. There obviously have to be some major benefits for fish to make this dramatic shift onto land. Otherwise, why would they do this? These fish need to get away because you can imagine how getting eaten is really bad for your reproduction. Yeah, yeah generally, I would, I would yes. after eating. There's a lot of jokes to make here yeah. about yeah, reproduction and eating and we're not going to make yep. any of them. Um, Almost a family show today. It turns out the aquatic environment is a nasty place for blennies full of enemies wanting to eat these small fish. But life is less hostile on the rocks with birds as their main worry. I can ima- I'm just trying to imagine like being less hostile, not being in the water. Like the predation in that area must be so huge. Right. What is in there? What else is there? <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Rarotonga in the Cook Islands provides an extraordinary opportunity to study fish evolution in action because four species of blennies have independently emerged from the water to spend various amounts of times on land. <coughs> the researchers observed the behavior of three of these amphibious species which divide their time between the water, the rock shelf, and the intertidal zone and the exposed land above the high tide mark. So they can be way up above the high water mark. What How do they get up? I'm so uh, confused. Do they just I'm, jump and stick? What's the I'm deal? hoping they say. <laughs> uh, a low tide, at low tide, most of the blennies were on the rock shelves in the intertidal zone. Those remaining in the water actively avoided areas where there were predators, such as flounders, uh, trevallis, wrasses, and moray eels. Okay, those are all very good predators. As the tide came in and the rock shelf became submerged, most of the blennies moved to higher ground above the tide mark to, to avoid being eaten and they acquired pressure. Now, blennies can, um, they can walk. Like a real walk or like a like, like a on wiggle. their fins. Interesting. They can pull themselves around their fins. There's a whole you can go on YouTube and watch these videos. Uh, as a, as a tie, I read that one already. Um, the team also created 250 replica blennies out of plasticine and placed them in the water and on land above the high tide mark. There were far more attacks on the model fish from predators in the ocean than predators on the shore, show, showing these are that there are obvious benefits of blennies becoming fish out of water and colonizing the land. Other reasons fish might move on land it could be to find a new source of food, to escape competition resources, and to escape adventure. I love this. Um, I love that they had to do an experiment to find out you're more likely to get eaten by a fish underwater if you're right. under the water. <laughs> someone spent money on that experiment. So common sense does not Some, dictate someone, that. Right. Someone came up with an idea. Let's do an experiment. Wrote up the, the, the experiment and somebody else funded it. And that's t- remarkable <laughs> to me. 
So that that's it. So um, what what have you guys done to avoid predation? How do you not get eaten by wild well, animals? I do carry. So I've got yeah. that going for me. Yep. Yeah. Now I've been shark fishing, and I can tell you, being out of the water <laughs> seems like a safer place to be than in the water with shark fishing. Yeah, but you did get a mako. We did. So you could have gotten eaten while you're on the boat. I, I gotta tell you, when when this is not I'm not making this up, we're exaggerating. Have you caught a big mako before? I have not. Okay. Caught a mako yet. Well, good. Talk to Cotton Sean. Now, <laughs> when that fish jumped out of the water, my instinct was to jump into the water. Was w whatever side of the water that shark was on, I was going to be on the opposite side. That was my plan. So that's a bad. Plan. <laughs> well, because there's probably more than one, right? Yeah, right. So uh, anyway, that's that's Blennies. They can walk on land. What um, so Lindsay, what do you think is? Have you been here for more than one day? I have been here. This is my second day. Second year, day. Yeah. And did you have a good time yesterday? Yeah, we did, did. We did good yesterday. Yeah. A lot good. bigger crowd today. Well, it's Saturday, right? It is Saturday. And the big sh the big uh, sample sales happening. Yes. Yeah. I, I tried going in that room. I couldn't you even... You can't. It's impossible. You yeah. can throw elbows to get in there. Yes. And there was a line. I talked to the first person in line this morning. I didn't have my court recording equipment on, but he uh, lined up at 4 o'clock this morning. There was a guy out there with a hunting blind and a heater. Mr. Buddy Heater sitting out there. Smart dude. Yeah, if you're gonna do it, do it. Um, I'll figure, go home. Now, now I don't, um, I don't buy expensive fishing gear because I don't have money. Yeah, yeah. but um, I'm just trying to imagine: would I stand in line for I, a fishing I reel? I don't think I would. To save forty-seven dollars. Well, that's forty-seven bucks, right? Right. If but, you really want that reel. But at the end of the day, it's you know what, five hours of your time to get it. It is. It is a lot of your time, but you know what? If, in Southern Maine and Southern New Hampshire, the ice fishing is done. And people have time. Yeah, I mean, people are people are turning their focus to saltwater fishing now, and a lot of that room is saltwater reels, and they do get really good deals on those. So and saltwater I mean, stuff is more expensive, right? Oh God, yeah. 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 So yeah. well, good. Well, hey, uh, Mike and Lindsay, thanks for coming on the show and helping with the Blake. news, and we'll we'll pop back in throughout the day. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, nerds. <laughs> Mike Steffens here. Yes, I am. We're so happy to see you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I've met you. I met you on the ice uh, about a couple weeks ago. Yeah. We didn't do well. We did okay. We caught fish. Yeah. But we didn't it wasn't catch. big. I did well afterwards. We did well back. We went back to Winnipesaukee. You're like, yeah. Yeah, your spot sucks. I'm leaving. <laughs> but hopefully we'll get out this weekend and, and uh, yeah, tomorrow. To we'll tomorrow. Yeah. Theoretically, my wife gave me the green light, but she's already talking about other plans for tomorrow, so she's forgotten. That she's done that, but anyway. So, um, Mike, you work at UNH. Yeah. Is that okay to say on the air? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Yeah, and, yeah. and you're a biologist. Uh huh. I'm a postdoctoral researcher. Right. Which means you're nerdier than all of us. Yeah, I do nerding stuff during the week, and then on the weekends I do fish nerd stuff. Which is totally cool, right? <laughs> and you sent us a story. We just did a story on the blennies adapting to live out of water. Mm -hmm. I felt like the story was incomplete <laughs> uh, because it, it described as living out of water to escape predation. And it didn't describe how long they stay out of water. Did, do you know anything about uh -huh. this? No, I actually I read it just for sort of really like the cliff note version of the actual paper itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. But, that's all the ad. <laughs> that's yeah, all that's we have too. So, but I, I mean, I know Blennies have adapted years ago. We've we've known this for a long time that they can walk on land. They can adapt to, to living out of water. The question I was going to ask is how long can they stay out of water for? You know, is it just for that tide duration and they go back to the shallows again or whatever? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of you know, things like catfish or whatever. They actually have, you know, parts in their gills that keep them from collapsing on one another. That's the main thing why fish can't live out of water is there's just not enough surface area within the gills itself. Mm -hmm. So when they do come out of water, all the gills just sort of collapse. And they carry water in there? There's some water, but there's not enough, you know, it's like lungs are full of basically a bunch of air sacs that give a lot of surface area for oxygen to be exchanged. Same thing with the gills are essentially lungs, but they're just, you know, filaments of blood vessels. So presumably if any sort of fish can keep those the, our gills from collapsing on themselves, they should be able to stay out as long as they want, more or less, as long as they can keep wet. So what would be the mechanism to keep those like what, what's the mechanism that keeps them from collapsing on themselves? Is it I don't like actually a little know. vacuum I just, in no, there? No, or it's like the... I think it's actually like cartilaginous. I think yeah. at least within catfish. That's why you can keep a catfish out of water forever. It eventually dries up and all that stuff happens. But. Right, you can wrap, wrap them in a wet towel. You're good for a week with that yeah, catfish, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't do that. That's not kind. Yeah, but you could totally do that. Well, so are you fishing today? I don't know. I got a lot of work I was supposed to do this week. Mm -hmm. I never really did. It's not so nice out though, isn't it? It's super nice out. Yeah, there's no wind at all. And <sighs> you know, tomorrow's gonna probably suck if we yeah, go. Yeah, I was watching it. It sounds gonna be too a little bit windy maybe, but I think the temperature will be good. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on packing light. 
Cause yeah. Because when I when with clients and stuff, I always pack too much stuff. Uh-huh. And when I fish alone, I just want to have like three things, you know, a drill, a jigging rod, and sonar. And that's it. So, and we'll bring a snowmobile. That would be much nicer. Now, how's the ice on Wimpsaki right now? Uh, I didn't actually measure it because it was just there's no need to measure it because so was, everywhere was good. There's some big cracks apparently somewhere further out, but I never actually saw those. That's just talking to some people out there. Well, let's avoid those but, further out yeah. cracks. But even then, they said they would they would you know just fly across them and they could get through them. But that's not where I fish. So. Yeah, and, and I'm not brave like that. I don't have any fancy. No, it sounds scary. I don't have I don't fancy flotations on my machine, and I'm not a very good snowmobile driver. I got stuck yesterday in my backyard on my snowmobile. Huh. Turns out they suck in the snow. That's what I've learned by owning one this year. But weird. I would not think that. I would not think that either. But they are actually are terrible in the snow. They just huh. get they get bogged down. Huh. Yeah. So that's good. So um, what else going? No, not Nothing. much. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. I basically just work during the week and then I fish in the weekend. Well, cool. And, I, and we're going to be asking people today a question as they come by. I'm going to ask you the questions. Not okay. Sure. All right. So the first one is, what is the strangest thing you've ever caught a fish on? Any kind of weird baits or lures or that Maybe a swivel. A swivel? Just on a swivel? Yeah. Just like, like an that. open swivel. There was a place in Minnesota, a lake with just tons of panfish, really big ones, and they would literally bite anything you put out there. So you could put bear hooks. But I remember we had a swivel out there. I think that was just dangling off the side of the boat. Beautiful. And then it bit onto that and hooked itself on itself. That's cool. Yeah. I used to have fish when I was a kid. We used um, bacon. We, Bacon? Was, I've tried it before for yeah. catfish and stuff, but it doesn't stay on the hook well. I've been okay with it. This is in New York City, fishing off the piers in the Coast Guard base. And so we used bacon, we had uh, string, we had a cheap hook, and then for a weight we used, um, we used, uh, my brain just turned off, spark plugs <laughs> for fishing really? weights. Yeah. Spark plugs? Spark plugs. <laughs> yeah, they totally work. Huh. Yeah, you just hammer down that little pin piece, so now you've got a circle, and you tie your line to it, and you Why do you have go. so many spark plugs? I was on a Coast Guard base, so I'd be able to raid the garbage bins. My dad was, uh, me- okay. was, a, my dad was a mechanic, um, a helicopter mechanic, so I'd be able to raid the bins there. I, just, huh. took, I took crap. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so cool. Hey, Mike, thanks for coming on the show. That's, yeah, sure. that's short and sweet. That's what we're doing today. Everything's short. Good. So good. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, ClayGrossFishNerds.com, hanging out with Captain Sean from MainTunaFishing.com. Uh, if you have young children or sensitive people in the room, uh, you might want to have them leave now. Hey, Sean. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. How are you? Good. It's been a long time, like two months. You have a good winter? Had a great winter. Did some ice guiding this year. My ice guiding. First time guiding. You know, the only ice that I want to be involved with is the ice that's in my drink. You can... You can't catch any fish that way. Yeah, but I don't drink, so I'm screwed. You, either way, you're out. You're just going to be just dry and not catching I'll fish. Be dry and warm. Well, there it is. We, we were mostly dry and warm this winter, but there were a few days where it was impossible. Yeah. And, Rich Yvonne and keeps trying to get me to go up to a maple. He keeps trying to get me to go up there. And he's got a good operation. He'll about as warm as you can get right exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah, I, I would go with, if, if you're choosing between me and him, if I was you, i choose him. <laughs> There's ice involved. Yeah. Rich has been trying for three years. Three years. I still haven't gone. Well, maybe uh, next year. Maybe. Maybe I'll come up. We could record it. And we'll do a whole show. I'll fish with, 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 with Rich and you. And I'll sit in the truck with the heat on. And we can we, we'll just live stream it to you. You can just Perfect. watch it on video. On the I can truck. watch it on my phone, except it's in northern Maine. Phones don't work. Nothing works. Nothing works. Nothing works. That's, that's my only thing. Is anytime I get invited to go fish up that way, I'm like, five hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's so far. Rich and I went hunting for a week last year. And, uh, yeah, like 30 minutes outside of Rich's house, the phone didn't work until we got back. But, it's, but, but he does a nice operation. Beautiful, beautiful part of the country. But you have to understand where you're going when you go for it. You exactly. are going into nowhere. Exactly. And you know, his yeah. setup is beautiful. His lodge is gorgeous, full of amenities. But when you get out on your trip or whatever you're doing, you're in the woods. All right. This epi- episode is brought to you by Twin Maple Outdoors yes. for all your outdoors needs. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, but he's just a friend of ours. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't actually pay us. But we get to fish with him occasionally. Yeah. So there's that. All right. We're going to do some fish in the news because Sean loves it. And I hear there's poop involved. Uh, there's always poop involved because we're talking about animals. Animals. So, yeah, animals all right. poop, right? Yeah, and this is from... You had me a poop play. I know. Well, I, you, you brought the poop discussion in. I just said whales. Wait a minute. 
I brought it in. You said whales. I said whales poop a lot. There it is. Big poop. You brought it like up. Fish. <laughs> what kind of whale poop are you talking? Uh, the ones that eat fish. Like minkies? Like minkies. Yeah. See, I know one thing. Yeah, I don't know much about <laughs> whales except the Japanese pay big bucks for them. Yeah. Is that what you sell them to? I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is from uh, Pop Science. Most of the whales seem... Oh, that's page two. Oh, that's page two. I am no professional. I see that. I hope I have page one. <laughs> there it is. This is from Popular Science. Popular Science? Popular Science. What's it, popular about it? Uh, maybe science? Science. Popular, very popular Science. Yeah, all right. Humpback whales are organizing in huge numbers, and no one knows why. I don't know. I think I know why. Why? They're protesting. They're protesting? Yeah, they don't like the current state of politics, so they're all, they're all organizing. The problem is, they're going to get together, they're going to talk a lot, but when it comes time to vote, they're still not going to show up and vote. They're all going to vote Trump. They're going to vote for who they want. Perfect. They're not going to show up. <laughs> all right, so, uh, let's see. Um, by the way, the gathering in large number flies in the face of typical humpback behavior. Ah. Yeah. And who decides what typical humpback behavior is? That's a very good question. Somebody must be the arbiter of behavior. Uh, all right, this Do they go to prison for bad behavior? Depends on how deviant it is. Ah, yeah. They go to whale jail. Whale jail. <laughs> <laughs> Any jail that rhymes is a good jail, right? <laughs> all right, the world is ending and only the whales know why. At least that's one explanation. Humpback whales are normally pretty solitary. Scientists used to call groups of 10 to 20 large. Now they're congregating in groups of 20 to 200 off the coast of South Africa. Something is definitely going on here, but so far, experts are stumped. Stumped. They should just end the article there. They should. But now they're going to go on and tell you why they're stumped. Ah! When you don't know something... they have got to tell you why you don't know. We're going to explain it. Yeah. All right. So, in fact, humpback whales aren't supposed to be hanging out in that region in the first place. Humpbacks migrate up to tropical waters to breed, but they typically feed down south in the icy waters of Antarctica this time of year. Yet scientific expeditions keep seeing these super pods, not to be confused with super packs. Wonk, wonk. Um, that's not as funny. Uh, <laughs> they wrote this, not me. All I keep hearing is like the scene from Snoopy's with the teacher. And Clay's like, wah, 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 wah. You lost me after. You know, I know. You lost me after 30 seconds. The researchers have a few ideas about why the humpbacks are organizing, but no clear answers yet. So far, the consensus seems to be it's pretty freaking weird. Wow. This is a science article. Science. Someone got paid. Because it's science. Yeah. Most of the whales seem to be young, begging the question of whether the western coast of South Africa is like the humpback version of local mall for tween whales. Someone's just making crap up. Yeah. <laughs> They're just looking... How much do they get paid for this? More than us. They're just looking for a fishy orange Julius or perhaps a krill-based Panda Express to hang out on a Saturday afternoon because it's not like 200 whales each weighing about... 65,000 pounds can just feed anywhere. So, congressional, congressions of whales, congregations, I can't read, Sean. Big words, I, I like read worse than you. Big words. If it's possible. What are you trying to say? I'm telling you, you read better than I do. Ah, okay. That, that's exactly what I said. Almost verbatim. Okay. All right. Just making sure. Congregations of whales usually indicate parts of the ocean that are especially wah, productive. Wah, wah, <laughs> wah, wah. Well, so... So... So what? I'm going to stop reading this. Oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, because you get the idea. They're well, we got the idea. Somebody doesn't know why, and now they're trying to explain. Right. Now, with all wildlife, we can tell a lot about an animal and how many are in an area based on feces. Feces. And that's what we want to talk about, really. Oh, we're going to talk about whale poop. Now, you have spent your days on the ocean. A few. Tell us about what you know about whale poop. Do you see this? Is it a thing? I've never seen it. You haven't seen it? No. Maybe it doesn't happen. I have a real shitty whale story, though. Let's hear it. So... Probably five years ago, I'd never seen a sperm whale. Sperm, Clay. Sperm. sperm. You should humpback. see Clay's face. I said sperm, and we, Clay we're was like, "What?" Sperm whales and humpback whales in the same day. It's the so, best day ever. Probably like five years ago, there was a sperm whale that was just outside of Jeffries, and I heard the whale watch boats talking about it. You know, Jeffries is 20 miles offshore. You know, one of the grounds we normally fish, and I heard one of the whale watch boats talking about it on the VHF radio. And I'm like, "Oh, never seen a sperm whale." We gotta check this out. Right. Plus, you weren't catching fish, right? So yeah, yeah, because that's a problem. <laughs> um, so we steamed over there, and there's like three or four whale watch boats, and I'm not really paying attention. The whale watch boats are all upwind of this whale because they know better. Because they know better. So Captain Sean is up in the tower, and I got a lady up in the tower with a with a camera, and we steam, you know, 
within legal distance of the whale and the thing blows. Well, sperm whales blow forward at a 45 degree angle. <laughs> and when said sperm whale blows, it's like snot. That's fantastic. It reeks like squid and fish. And it landed all over you. Uh, everything. Oh, yes. Two days of bleaching to get this thing. Ah, oh, you're like driving a chum pot now. Oh, it was awful. That's fantastic. Oh, it was awful. It was cool, though. You're so lucky. Now, was the woman impressed? Until she got sperm whale. There was very few women are impressed with that. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> no. Too bad. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a great story. It was a great story. That's really good. Can we cut all this out? No. All right, Clay Grubbs from Fish Nerds. We are hanging out at Kittery Trading Post. Been here all day, like 19 hours today. And uh, there's been about 20 million people have come through because of the big storms outside. <laughs> it's, it's a podcast, Don. We're in the ba- we're in the basement. It, it could be storming. And we have no know. idea. The light of day does not get down here. We are in the storm cellar, uh, with all the good fishing gear is. You don't get distracted that way. There's a lot of distractions here, Donna. Donna, who are you? Uh, my name is Donna Beyer. I work in the fishing department at the Trading Post, and I'm having a great time here. I know. I've been trying to talk to you all day, and I was every time I try to get to you, you're selling things to people. Which is probably your job. My mission. Your mission. <laughs> your mission. What's been the big seller today? What do people really want? A lot of trolling stuff going out. Mm-hmm. A lot of people prepping for the season. A lot of fly gear. The fly fishermen are gearing up. They usually come in right behind the salmon fishermen. Mm-hmm. And then the next big hit will be with the saltwater fishermen. You can also almost expect them week by week who's going to be coming in. So you, you can follow the fishing reports and just kind of know what's going to come, come mm-hmm. next. And it's the same follow every the year. the fishermen and know <laughs> what's coming. And it's the same every year, right? Yes. Is there any like, new thing this year? Like, it's like the hot item? Like What do people love this year? There's a lot of hot new lures uh-huh. and pieces of gear. The uh, whopper ploppers. I know, I know. I didn't name them. I, no, all the good names have been used up. Big tra- A lot of training. <laughs> I can say it without going... Uh-huh. But um, the Whopper Ploppers, great feedback, both salt and fresh. Uh, we've got some new hooks, totally different from anything anybody's been selling, called Trapper Hooks. Right. Well, my friend Phil Belcher has been selling those mm-hmm. here, right? He was here a couple days ago. I'm going to be trying them both for my soft plastics. And there's their small uh, drop shot rig I'm looking forward to using. It also looks like it will make a very nice caddis uh, or rock worm imitator. Yeah, now for those who haven't seen the trappers, they have, they're basically like the big hook shaped things with like a mm-hmm. square. Right, a little box at the back. Yeah. It locks your plastics into place so they won't slide back and forth and get beaten up as badly. They'll stay positioned, but also the idea is. It's also a very nice sharp hook, something I'm impressed with. Mm -hmm. But when the hook penetrates the fish's jaw, the fish will slide into that box. They won't slide around on the hook, causing more damage to themselves or possibly coming free as often. So a little safer for the fish and and hopefully catch more as well. It looks that way. Yeah, yeah, those are really cool. And I won't be shocked to see those come become the next big thing. You know, we'll find out. One I'm can never know. It. I imagine those need a lot of sales people to really push them too, to get people. People in the fishing world are afraid of change, and it takes a long time to get some of our old souls into something, something brand new. So, <laughs> <laughs> like the uh, another hot lure last fall, and we'll see how they work. The suicide ducks. They look. <laughs> I've seen those too. <laughs> they look hysterical. Uh, the fishermen. Some of the fishermen are going. Cool. I want one. Uh, some of the old timers are going, really? It works. I've heard. I haven't heard of people fishing with actual ducklings. Yeah. I, but I, I saw a bass try to take a duck once. I've seen that. It yeah. It was badly. Ju- but these suicide ducks to the older guys are going. It's a buzz bait that looks fancy. Mm-hmm. You're gonna like it. Trust me. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, essentially, when I know about fishing, you probably could tell me if I'm right or wrong. What what do people buy when they're buying a lure? Is it is it just the next big thing, or are all lures essentially kind of the same thing with a different kind of cover on them? There's not a whole lot of new ideas. Once in a while, you'll get something, but 
swim baits, which are the big thing the last couple of years, are basically swim baits. Mm -hmm. uh, the crank baits that have been so popular the last couple of years, uh, there's one brand that's been very popular, Daiwa, for instance, but everybody makes a crankbait in that general shape. So it's, there are variations. There's not that often something that's totally new and uh, really exciting to see. Just different variations. And really, right. a lot of lures are made for the fisherman who's going to use them. And confidence in your bait is really what's going to catch you the fish that's a lot of times. That's my philosophy. Yes. Yeah. If you believe... Uh, and we discuss it in color a lot, uh, with colors a lot. Go with what you believe, you'll fish it harder. And yes, we market to the fishermen because they're the ones coming in. And so. They like buying stuff. Yes. Yeah. So good. And I have two more questions for you. Mm -hmm. What's the strangest bait you've ever caught a fish with? Strangest bait mm. or lure? By the way, years ago, you guys sold cow lures here. They were cows with a treble hook attached to them. I bought them. I got them. There were also beer can lures. Yep. Um, I confess to... Okay, there's the one that has made me um, kind of persona non grata in some corners <laughs> for a while. It's called the gummy minnow. It's mm -hmm. actually a fly, if you accept that premise. It is a latex... Uh, you know, imitator. It looks like a sluggo that's been run over. Nice. And traditionalists absolutely hate this fly. Traditionalists hate a lot of things. I th that's it's okay. their hobby. It's okay. I mean, if they like that, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I use them because they work. And I, but I have the uh, gall to recommend using them for salmon, which makes it How even worse. How dare you? <laughs> they work. People are so protective of those salmon. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with that. Sure. But, uh, but yes, it's an odd-looking fly. The mock fly looks great, but when you hear the first hear the term mock fly, you're going, huh? we've been We've been catching lake trout ice fishing with mock flies this year. I believe that. Yep. It looks like... To me, it looks like it would be a great shrimp, freshwater shrimp I, imitator. I want to take a mop fly and I want to soak it in like fish oil <laughs> and then jig that because I think that stink on top of it would I mean, hold so much oil because yes. it's so absorbent. And uh, just let it out slowly and hang on. Yeah, it'd be great. Good. And one more question. Um, what do you think a, a Collins perch is? Collins Perch. A Collins perch. Something that Rich has been catching. <laughs> you know Rich? <laughs> I do. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, you're the first person to say who knew what I was talking about. We're, we're trying to start a new trend uh, and make sure everyone starts calling small yellow perch Collins perch. I was perch. just going to say, I was thinking maybe, you know, yeah. guppy-sized perch Exactly, or exactly. We've been teasing Rich all winter, hashtagging every small perch a Collins perch, and we're trying to get... It's a trend. There so. are people that everyone picks on. Yeah. Rich, unfortunately, has been designated. Or fortunately. It means we like them. Well, you know. yes. And, and in general, in fishing, we're going to pick on people we like more than people we don't like. We tend to ignore those we don't like. So. Well, there's that, too. <laughs> yeah. So better than being ignored. Donna, thank you so oh, much. My pleasure. Thank you. And I uh, hope you have a great time. And if you're right. guy, if anyone ever makes it to the Kittery area, Kittery, Maine, you will need to stop into the Kittery Trading Post. You can buy... All kinds of cool stuff here. And Donna's here, which is really the best reason to come here than anything. We see you every time we come, and we love seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Hot fish nerds. Free bird. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> you have a lovely voice. You stuck a mic in my face. I know. I know. So we're going to wrap this show up. So, Sean, uh, how you been? Good, how are you? Good, a good day? Been a good day. You sold a lot of stuff? Clay, so that is it. So you, I, I read the... Oh, you read that. I'm going to read that line, and we're blank. Oh. You read... So that would be Sean. Sean. Yeah, you've done this before. I have, but you didn't have notes before. I know. All right, so um, before we wrap oh, up... Oh, before we wrap up. So we're at Kittery Trading Post, been here for... Is that where we are? Been here for like 12 hours. Is this Kittery Trading Post, Lindsay? Must no? have talked to 30,000 people. <laughs> How, and, and you talked to a lot of people today? Yeah, we talked to Have you been to nice to them? 
I'm always nice. All right, just checking in. I want to make sure. I'm here to look out for you. I'm just a nice guy. You are. You are. And we pretty course, thank you to Kittery Trading Post for having us. Let's let's read this closing. Thank you for Kittery Trading Post for having us. So that's it. You listen to a whole bunch of fish turds when you should have been fishing. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> insert name here. Oh, insert name here. All yeah, right. Just read the words. We'd like to thank our families for supporting us while we podcast. Go Sound on fishing. Out. You're doing great. And then you interrupted me. We'll try that again. All right. We'd like to thank our families for supporting us while we podcast. Go on fishing quests and do all sorts of silly things that nerds do. <laughs> if you'd like to support fish nerds, you can go to paid. That, you go to that website Patreon.com Patreon, that's it And search for the Fish Nerds And help us crowdfund this podcast Special thanks to Kittery Trading Post For hosting the Fish Nerds today And of course all the vendors we talked to And our very favorite Captain Sean Best Captain Sean we know <laughs> Second best. And until next time Follow the codes of the Fish Nerds Spawn early and often It's a good code Avoid free lunches with strings attached Swim against the current every chance you get Perfect, see? Yeah, it's going to require more. It always does when you shine. It does. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs>